Welcome back to From Chains to Change. Hi, guys. Hey, Sway. Hey, Sway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Consuela Sway Gaines, and today with me, I have my co-worker. Um, Marcus Simmons, uh, a.k.a. Chachi, and I'm a Lafayette organizer um, for Vote, Voice of the Experience. And one of our outstanding member leaders... Matthew Green, a uh, member of VOTE and uh, leader of the member policy team. And we are here today to share some very interesting topics that we feel that all of you need to know and hear about. Um, but first, one of the things we wanted to touch upon was the fact that we haven't kind of revisited to our viewers who we are, mm -hmm. what is who is vote? A lot of people say, what is vote? You see the word vote and you think that's all we're about. But notice, voice of the experience. That is what it's all about. And so we're going to touch upon that a bit more in this particular episode. Mm -hmm. So you guys can get a better understanding of who vote is and who we're not. And um, so we'll just kick that conversation off. Um, Vote was actually started at Angola, mm -hmm. Louisiana State Penitentiary at Angola. Um, our founder, Norris Henderson, um, he's our executive director. He and several other gentlemen were there at Angola, and they put together a group called the Special Civics Project. And they wanted to be able to educate the guys on the inside about their civil rights, about their voting rights. Can you believe that? talking about voting rights inside mm -hmm. a prison. Right. That's unheard of, because I know the 22 years I was incarcerated, that was a topic that was never even brought up on the inside. So for these gentlemen to be thinking about um, teaching other people about voting rights mm -hmm. and their civil rights was unheard of. And so, um, you know, they they did a lot of really, really amazing things that were able to restore freedom to to the guys on the inside as well. And I think one of the most uh, special parts of the Angola Special Civics Project was every single person who was a member mm -hmm. was some way impacted by the law, right? Yes. By ending up going through the criminal justice system. And it was all dedicated to educating people about the law mm -hmm. and knowing about the law, how to use the law to your mm -hmm. advantage, how to know your rights. The rights of, of all humans were at the center of that work. Mm -hmm. And so knowing the law and understanding the law um, and then using the law has right. always been at the right. heart of right. VOTE, yes. the Voice of the Experience in the Angola Special Civics Project. Yes, and I'm glad you said that, you know, because even when I, I was at the Louisiana Correctional Institute for Women in St. Gabriel. Um, I was what they call an inmate counsel sub for about 10 years. So I was able to learn about laws and mm -hmm. able to help women with some of their criminal and even some of their civil cases dealing with their, their children and things like that. And so um, 
most of the time people who become incarcerated don't know or understand what their rights are mm -hmm. and so it's important to be able to have people on the inside right. who can actually assist right. them with that and so nars those guys they did it at angola they were able to you know win the freedom of a lot of the guys there until they were able to actually regain their own freedom mm -hmm. um because nars spent 27 years mm -hmm. at Angola on a crime that he didn't commit. Right, right. And so you have a lot of other guys and women who are sitting behind bars on crimes that they didn't commit or for crimes that they should have received a lesser included offense for um, and definitely excessive sentencing. Mm -hmm. um, and so at vote, that is something that we're trying to change, we're trying to improve in the criminal justice system because the excessiveness of sentencing and then it and it and it's really more black and brown people who receive these excessive sentences. Mm -hmm. And so we're constantly advocating and trying to uh, revisit the laws to see why it is that our criminal justice system or our prisons or mm -hmm. are just bursting from the seams with black and brown people and poor people and it's because louisiana has a very very bad tendency to place extreme sentences on black and brown and poor people of our communities right. so i was going to say it seems like louisiana likes to incarcerate first and ask questions right. later right. yes right. Right. try to figure right. out how right. that right. 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 maybe Right. I'll say maybe because I don't see them really working very hard to, to, try to, to prevent mm -hmm. people from going into incarceration, which a lot of that stems from poverty. Mm -hmm. It stems from poverty. It stems from um, people not being educated. It stems from um, literacy. People okay. not so, being right, able to read right, and write. Right. So thinking about this, and, and we're wanting to sort of revisit the history of VOTE and talk about VOTE's core mission here. Um, thinking about VOTE's core mission, I want to ask each of you, because both of y'all members of VOTE for a long time and, and work for VOTE. What do you see as VOTE's core mission? I know VOTE has its, its written core mission, mm -hmm. but vote, VOTE is doing a lot, and we, we thought this was a great opportunity yeah. to not only revisit the core mission, but talk about some of the initiatives VOTE is involved in. So what do you all see as VOTE's core mission, I, if you were to summarize it? I would say that the core mission would be to end mass incarceration, right? And the only reason I feel that we have such a, an abundance of incarceration of black and brown is because people couldn't afford proper mm -hmm. um, consultation. Mm -hmm. And representation. Right? Representation, couldn't mm -hmm. afford it. And you know, of course the system take advantage of that. And you know, they just capitalize on us. And, and plea bargain folks out. That's yeah, you know, like she said, illiteracy. Mm -hmm. I think a majority of people would be surprised to know that most convictions are plea bargains, they're plea not bargain. even actual plea convictions. Right. Yes. Right. Um, people don't go to trial right. very often right. anymore. Right. Right. right, right. And 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 it also has become um for the for the longest time kind of like a routine, a style. Mm -hmm. My dad ends up in prison, my brother ends up in prison, my uncle ends up so by the time it gets down to you, it's almost a no brainer that you're gonna get your turn. So let me and, let me, let me ask you all this, right, because I don't think a lot of people know what a plea bargain or a plea deal is, mm -hmm. right? They think mm -hmm. that if you, you take something, you admit that you're, right, like you admit you're guilty or something, then you're just guilty. But a, a plea bargain isn't a court case. It's not a trial. It's, no. it's, mm -hmm. it's not a jury finding you guilty. What exactly is a plea bargain? How would you all explain a plea bargain to folks? I, I, I would, a plea bargain is basically... Um, I guess for, for, for us, it would be a way out, mm -hmm. right? A way out. Now, it's you're saying that you're guilty without realizing the extent of what you're doing because you, a lot of times you're being coerced mm -hmm. by a public defender. I'm going to keep it real. Um, and they're, the charges that you're under, probably they're probably making it seem more severe than it actually yeah. is mm -hmm. and you know so when when someone speaks 
and speaks to you and tells you, well, if you do three years and you can, but you don't understand that you just gave up all of your rights up until, mm -hmm. what, five years once you get out, mm -hmm. providing that you could stay free yeah. and not get in trouble, you can, you can vote, you can, you know, but, mm -hmm. but a plea bargain is basically just, um, just a, a way out without going to a trial that you can't afford. Yeah, I, I that think you I'm, can't endure. Uh, yeah, you know, because uh -huh. it's it's costly and it's right. lengthy. Right. I don't think a lot of people realize that in our current criminal justice system, so many people are overcharged with different offenses uh -huh. that the plea bargain is an attempt to. It's lessened, yeah, but it's right. still you have to give away a lot. And so right. instead of being charged with 10 things, you may be charged with three. With, with three things. And right. um, it is sort of a, a form of coercion. Right. Because um, yeah. you're still right. Right. signing a lot away. It is. And they, they make it seem as if it's the better thing to do in your circumstance, in your situation. Mm -hmm. um, if Take, for instance, if you're being charged with armed robbery. Mm -hmm. Armed robbery carries 10 to 99 years in Louisiana. Um, and here comes your trial date. You're getting close to your trial date. You've been incarcerated um, for about maybe two, two three years. years. Two, three mm -hmm. years. You're ready to get out. And your attorney comes to you and says, look, they're willing to give you 10 years probation. No, you can't get probation. Oh, no, you're right, right. No, right, 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 um, right. Not on the not on the. The district attorney is offering offense. you fifty years or thirty years or even twenty years for the armed robbery charge. Mm -hmm. But you know it carries ninety nine. It carries ninety nine. Mm. So for you to avoid going to a jury trial, being found guilty, and ha having the judge decide this is going to be, I'm going to sentence you to 99 years due to the severity of this armed robbery charge. You're like, man, I don't want to go to prison. For I'll take 20. Yeah, 40 years. I'll, I'll, take, so I'll, I'll <laughs> take the lesser evils. I'll, yeah. I'll take 20 years because I'll be paroled. I'll, 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 I'll have to, do, and most people don't know anything about the acts or how much yeah. of the, the actual 20 year sentence they'll have to serve violent crime serve 85 percent right. people don't really know that going in <laughs> and so you pretty much get suckered in you know and you're still stuck with a 20 yeah. or 30 or 40 or more year sentence instead of and sometimes a person can be innocent That's and they're right. saying i, I didn't right. do it i wasn't That's there right. it wasn't me mm -hmm. That's right. but your attorney is not really she doesn't have time or he or she yeah. doesn't have time to really sit with you and really talk to you about your case because they have about a hundred right. other yeah. people that they're Clients. they're they're yes. uh trying to um defend as well so they don't have much time to talk to you spend with you to hear you out and so here this is your option look i'm just trying to get you in the system mm -hmm. and get you going and so they offer you these these plea bargains and you're ready to start getting your time you're ready to go get shipped where you need to go so you can start doing whatever and this is your option you either go to trial and you're looking at 99 or you take these 20. Yeah. so people are going to opt out and take that 20. Yeah. and yeah i want to point out two things for for our audience one exactly what y'all are describing uh i believe it was last year or two years ago vote was um sort of championing championing and pushing <laughs> Uh, the collateral collateral consequences bill, where yes. people had to be notified of mm -hmm. the collateral consequences of having a felony or losing yes. your voting rights when they took plea deals. So mm -hmm. that's some of the work that vote is is engaged in is getting these bills so that people actually know right. what they're signing what they're away signing and what they're that's taking. Right. And that's um, because huge. not a lot of people know the that's collateral huge. consequences. That's right. huge. The second thing I want to highlight for our audience. So Vote has a saying, those closest to the problem are closest to the solution. Mm -hmm. and I want to highlight the amount of knowledge that's sitting up here with me today, right? Like the way that both of y'all are able to talk about sentencing, the process, what you can and cannot get probation for. That's not a lot of knowledge that the general public has. No. It's right. not knowledge that no. it's knowledge I don't have. Right. And 
You have to really I'm a, I'm be in the system. Yeah. And, it's, like, yeah. Yeah. and it's, it's the amount of knowledge that and Vogue the utilizes. Yeah. yeah. And the way that Vogue utilizes its members and recognizing that you all bring knowledge of the system and how to work the system and the laws is so important to this work. Because there are some family members out there who have some incarcerated mm -hmm. loved ones and they're like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. I can't figure out what to do. They're telling me do this, do this, do this, get an attorney, a paid attorney who you can't afford right. that yeah. wants ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars of money that you don't have and you're like, Oh my God, my child is facing a life sentence right. or a, a virtual life sentence. Mm -hmm. What do I do? What do I do? <clears throat> they don't know. Families are clueless. They don't right. know or right. understand what's going on with their loved one. And it can be very depressing. Yeah. Very depressing. Absolutely. So, you know, here at Vote, um, we don't we don't take personal cases. Mm -hmm. We right. advocate I was just gonna in mass. We advocate for groups of people which are either going to be the incarcerated or formerly incarcerated people. We advocate for um, laws and for bills to be passed that will affect people who are currently or formerly incarcerated, not just one or two people. See right. what I'm saying? Yeah. And so a lot of people, um, we, we all, I always get calls of people, mm -hmm. um, and I don't mind, especially people who are calling about partner parole board yeah. hearings, because that's another process most people don't know. They don't understand, they've never been to a board hearing, they don't know what the board members are, are expecting or looking for what their loved one needs to be doing prior to the hearing right. Right. Um, to, prepare. to prepare for it to, for for a positive result you know and so i often get phone calls of people wanting to know um what do they have to do what, mm -hmm. what can they do you know so i don't mind sharing the knowledge that i have right. about the pardon and parole board process because even it can be you know a little mm -hmm. tricky if you don't know what yeah. that process is so Marcus gave us his uh, thoughts on what he, he thinks the core mission of VOTE is. This is a great time to ask you, Sway. Mm -hmm. well, how would you summarize the core mission of VOTE? I think the core mission of VOTE is mainly to educate mm. people about the criminal injustice system mm, in right. Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Because um, it's so much it is so it, it, it's so so much um because every year we're at the state capitol mm -hmm. constantly trying to pass or, or or advocate for different bills under that criminal justice umbrella because it's so huge um it affects thousands of people who are currently incarcerated mm -hmm. and even more thousands um who are formerly incarcerated because they have some draconian laws on the books. They do. Um, take for instance, we advocated for um, the non-unanimous jury right. to uh, to change, and so for over 130 yes, years, 130 years, you know, our, our juries, our juries, it could be 10 people mm -hmm. find you guilty, two people say you're not guilty, but you're still convicted. And there are still men and women who are currently incarcerated under that old law. But now, moving forward, it has to be a unanimous jury in Louisiana. Finally, it took them only 100 <laughs> plus years right. to get to that point. But it took organizations right. like this grassroots right. right. organization yeah, right. Right. vote to educate people because right. most people didn't even know right. that they was know. happening. Right. There are only two right. states in the whole right. United States that and still it did would it. be us, it uh -huh. would be Louisiana one. Um, and so people were shocked. Yeah. And people were actually shocked when they found out mm -hmm. that this was happening and didn't even realize it. They were just thinking it was, you know, it was unanimous jury right. and right. not realizing right. the history behind, yeah. you know, Mm -hmm. it, it and and it took like I said it took vote and other organizations to educate people so that they can see it's more than one side to every story mm -hmm. and I think that's yeah. that's especially important because when we think about what vote does yearly with policy going to the capital advocating 
Uh, we oftentimes think that legislators and lawmakers are experts in their area, and they're oftentimes not. And they're oftentimes in need and looking for constituents like me, like right, you, like right. you at to home, educate them. to talk to them about what the issues are, inform them about what is affecting your life, how does this uh, not work for you. Mm -hmm. And so it's vital, like that education component becomes so important mm -hmm. because it has real tangible outcomes. Yes. Just like the 10 to two juries that, yes. that we just saw um, yes. a couple years ago. Yes. Um, and, and I mean, it, it just goes on and on. And it brings us to Act 636. That's where I was another, going. Another piece of education that too many people still don't know about. Um, Act 636 restored voting rights to over 34,000 people in the state of Louisiana, 34 formerly incarcerated people in the state of Louisiana, people who have done their time or home and they can actually still be on parole at five years and be eligible mm -hmm. to register to vote. And For unfortunately, um, we had people in power in these elected official positions who refuse to put that information out. So mm -hmm. we had to be the boots on the ground. We still are the boots still on the are. ground trying to educate and inform the formerly incarcerated mm -hmm. people who may be affected by this particular um, act to get registered to vote. And that's where the name derived from, Voice of the Experience. Mm -hmm. And the experience is... The experience is that we've suffered the pain, we've endured, you know, everything that you could possibly, that you could possibly mm -hmm. imagine. So when we did get the opportunity to be out here, we knew that we had to bring relief to people. We had to educate people mm -hmm. because we knew what, we know what people are feeling. We know what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And you know, what? who would we be calling ourselves men, women, and without taking that opportunity to educate and help mm -hmm. rescue people yeah. from going through that. Right. Right. And for folks at, at home who are not familiar with Act 636 and the Louisiana laws, mm -hmm. before Act 636, if you were um, convicted and incarcerated, mm -hmm. you lost your right to vote for life. Yes. For life. Never, even after you paid your debt to society, right. you were free. Like before Act 636, you had thousands of people who no longer had the right to vote. Right. So Vote's mission in educating and advocating really serves its name both in voice of the experience, but also the act of vote, mm -hmm. right? The right. act of casting right. a ballot, the act of voting. Mm -hmm. And, and right. it's so it's why it's so vitally important to highlight both of those elements yes. as, as core yes. elements. And I don't think a lot of people know the history for why in the United States, we have we have and had laws that take away the right to vote from mm -hmm. incarcerated individuals. A lot of that history comes from Jim Crow South and mm -hmm. post Civil War slavery of wanting to disenfranchise black voters. Yes, one right. of the ways to legally disenfranchise right. black voters right. is through conviction. Right. And, and, and it's and it's unfortunate. And it still is that, still that is. now we're we're disenfranchising ourselves. Right. Yeah. Because we do have that right to vote and Don't will exercise. not get out and exercise that right. So we're disenfranchising ourselves because we're still believing my vote doesn't count, doesn't my count. voice doesn't matter. And that is not true. You know, I wish that all of those people who think that way would vote at least one time. Mm -hmm. If they would have voted at least one time, um, you would see the difference because that is thousands of people who think and feel that way yep. because it, it showed in the numbers mm -hmm. this, this recent this, this election. Recent election. It showed in the numbers. There was such a low, it, it was historic. Historically low. Um, voter turnout it, it was horrible it was horrible on both sides on both parties uh it was horrible i still can't get over it. i know I it was the lowest in 20 years exactly it was. and and 
And I think a lot of it has to do with people not truly understanding how important right. local elections are. Yep. You know, a lot of everybody wants to vote for the president. Mm -hmm. The president governs federal, right? Federal laws. He can sign off on federal laws, but the ones that are going to impact us more mm -hmm. directly and immediately and immediately are our local, mm -hmm. from our governor on down. Yep. That's local. And that is where we're seeing such a low turnout. I guess they call it, that's the down ballot, yep. right? That's the down ballot. That's the down ballot. And, and I think a lot of it had to do with people not seeing their particular party mm -hmm. represented on the ballot. So they said, well, my party isn't on the ballot, so I'm not voting. And that that mm -hmm. hurt more than it helped. It, it hurt a lot and, of things. And by not it, voting, you're actually voting. You are. Yeah. You're, you're you're allowing the status quo and the things that you're fed up with to just keep on going. Yeah, and um, and and it's it's sad that um, we only have a very small group of voters mm -hmm. who decided to make decisions for mm -hmm. millions of, of people us. in this right. state. You know, that's that's yep. that's the part I'm like, oh my God, just a small group of people I in this state who actually yeah. decided to go out and vote is making decisions for our elected mm -hmm. officials from the governor on down in this state that's going to impact us for the next four years. In a state with a couple million people it was only a couple hundred thousand that made the decision for mm -hmm. certain elect and some elected officials when you're thinking down ballot down to the local level who's in your city council your mayor's mm -hmm. race mm -hmm. those are only a few thousand that mm -hmm. are voting in in that not even a hundred thousand not no. even a million so it's it is a it's lot down about to a few thousand yeah it's especially in last year it's just down to a handful of people, literally a handful of people. I, what's the population in Lafayette? It's about 180, uh, maybe you 120, know, 120, 120,000. And you may have 10,000 people, Voting. if that, who's going to decide who's going to be our mayor um, mm -hmm. um, yeah. on the 18th, just so, a Saturday. Yeah, Saturday just is this election. Saturday, November 18th. Get out and vote November 18th. Please. Use the Go Vote app to find out your voting location. Yes. Um, and who's on the ballot. Because we also ballot. have some some constitutional, have amendments, constitutional amendments coming on up. there. <coughs> Pay attention to that too. Those you know? are vitally important because once those change, those are really hard to undo. Yes. Yes. One of the things that, that this got me thinking about being part of the member policy team with Vote advocating at the Capitol, working with some of the folks who organize about trips to the Capitol and bills and, and how we can get folks to use their voice. Voting is one way mm -hmm. you can use your voice. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about how few people actually vote. Another way that we see people advocate and talk to legislators and get things passed is by actually talking to legislators, right. yes. going to right. the Capitol. And right. if mm -hmm. you think about how many fewer people go to the Capitol, um, where maybe a couple hundred mm -hmm. go and speak and talk to their legislators. And that really actually has a huge impact, mm -hmm. regardless of who wins the election, going and talking to your yep. legislator, because they work for you. That's it. <laughs> that's right. They work for that's, you. That's, that's They're term the limited. Regardless of the party, regardless yes. of the party they are in, they still right. work for you. So you are look, their representative. My, my, my state senator, mm -hmm. I won't say who it is, my state senator, knows my face he may know my name because like my governor my governor governor edwards knows my name okay mm -hmm. he knows my yeah. name <laughs> my state senator he's gonna remember who i am yeah. you know because i'm gonna constantly be around right. letting him know i'm i'm watching you i'm seeing i'm right. hearing what that's you're doing right. that's right and that's right. um i'm gonna hold him accountable to some things we're not together as far as party affiliation but he's still my senator he's mm -hmm. still my representative so i have to be able to, and i can i can schedule meetings with him mm -hmm. when there are going to be bills coming up i'm going to sit down and have some conversations with him to find out how he feels about 
some particular bills and if he's going to be voting in support or against mm -hmm. and definitely trying to sway him whichever way I need him to go for the best interest of not me, but for people who are in the community, mm -hmm. who people who I know don't really know that they can do the same thing that yeah. I'm, I'm doing. Right. And I think people oftentimes think politics or their sort of involvement stops at voting, and it doesn't have to stop at voting. No. Like voting is an important part of who's going to represent you. Mm -hmm. But there's still work to be done talking to your representatives. You're right. I, going to the Capitol for three years now and being part of a member policy team, I think I've learned a lot about how much representatives listen to their constituents, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. when they get people writing to say they're unhappy about something right. they did. Right. right. Especially because they're not used to hearing right. from people. Right. No. They're not they're no. they're not used no. to hearing from you no. at home mm -hmm. calling and talking and saying, Hey, I saw you voted on this, I saw you voted on this, mm -hmm. or saying, I know this bill is coming up. Mm -hmm. Here's what I think you should know and how it affects me and my family. Right. 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 You have a vote that is going to affect me, my family, my friends, my community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, where the misconstruction comes from because it's People have been quiet for so long mm -hmm. without complaining to them or calling them out that the role, they in their brains the role has been reversed to where we work for them. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and that and that's it's that's that's not how it is. We yep. elected you to work for us. Mm -hmm. So you have to represent me in what I in the way I want to be represented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do that, right, right. And that 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 just reminds me of something locally. Mm. that I know all of you within the city limits of Lafayette had an issue with. That was our our new garbage cans. Yes. That is under the direction of the city, mm -hmm. right? Our, our, our city councilman, our mayor, is responsible for this new company. And you know the trans the, the the transition mm -hmm. from the old company to the new company and how things you know were going. So it falls back on our city council and our mayor president, mm -hmm. right? And for people not to get out and vote, you continue to see things happening like this that you will be dissatisfied with that. We, as their constituents, we should be at those city council meetings when they're deciding to get a new company that's only going to save us $2 a month, maybe, mm. or to keep it as is. Things are working smoothly. Why bother? You know, so I'm not yeah. speaking for or against, but that's just an example of something that's local that's directed under mm -hmm. your city council or your and your parish president to to drive home the importance of voting in your local elections that mm -hmm. is my point voting in your local elections and just recently i saw um there was a conversation in the in the city council about um sober living houses yep and um, it, I, I became so upset. I was like, oh, my God, nobody had done anything wrong, but they're trying to bring up the issue about, oh, but they, the potential, they could possibly be sex offenders or they could possibly, mm -hmm. possibility, your, your neighbor right now could possibly be a serial killer. You don't know who those people are. You know, you may know them for 20 years and something may happen. Right. Things happen all the time, but for people to actually be going to their city council representative mm -hmm. and complaining about a sober living house, that nothing is, no one has done anything, no laws yeah. have been broken, but they're, they're complaining about it. And so yeah. that's why you have to get involved and pay attention to what your city council mm -hmm. members are focusing on. So you can go to these these meetings because they're public meetings mm -hmm. and 
put your opinion. It reminds me of when we had Narika and Josh on the show to mm -hmm. talk about the, the local board, issues, yes, the school board, the parish city, council, that, and the yes. city council, um, and all the things that the. <laughs> The things that affect our lives day to day mm -hmm. are those local down ballot That's right. issues. Yes. They're not necessarily the big national issues or the state right. issues. They're those right. down ballot right. issues. Right. Um, in, in large and, and small ways, because I think yes. a lot of people are experiencing uh, issues with housing across huge, the board. Huge, huge issue. Board, huge so. issue. Um, and I know um, statewide, locally, um, Homelessness is is mm -hmm. a huge issue. It's just not enough housing, not enough affordable housing for people. So, and it's statewide. It's probably nationwide. Mm -hmm. um, but we're starting to really, really see the impact of the the unaffordability of it because you see a lot of homelessness. You mm -hmm. see, um, it's growing. It's growing every day. And of course, you know the crimes are going up. You know, the crime rates are going up and and people just want to focus on the crime. But people don't just wake up one day and say, I'm going out to commit a crime. I want to be a criminal. I want to be a criminal. I want to go to prison. They don't. Or, or I want to be homeless. Are, yeah. Right. They don't just wake up and say that. Because we're all that close for being homeless. Mm -hmm. Let your house catch on fire and you'll find out. You know, um, not wishing that on anyone, but just to show that. You know, a lot of people think, oh, it can never be me. You can lose your job. Mm -hmm. You can take sick. Yeah. You could be walking around with stage four cancer and yep. don't know it. And then what? You're the breadwinner of the family mm -hmm. and you go to a doctor's appointment right. and you find out that you have cancer and you have to go under some deep chemotherapy and you're not working. Who's going to take care of those children? Mm -hmm. Who's going to pay the bills while you're trying to take care of your health? And so we're all that close from yeah. homelessness. I mean, people, I, I don't know, some people feel like things could just never happen to them, even as far as going to jail or going to prison. I've enco I encountered nurses, mm -hmm. oh, doctors, lawyers, everyone. doctors who were incarcerated. Surgeons. I was incarcerated with a Incar surgeon. Teachers, you name it, no one is e exempt. Yeah from breaking the law. You don't know people's circumstances, but we're so quick to do this. We're so quick to judge and point the finger. Not saying, not, I'm not trying to um, excuse people mm -hmm. for, for committing crimes or breaking the law, but there's always an underlying reason that we're not privy, we're not privy to that information. Right. It definitely highlights how criminal justice system and incarceration affects all of us, mm -hmm. not just people we, we, we think it affects, but right. it's something that, and Vote talks about this a lot, like we're all touched by it in some way, whether you are in the criminal justice system yes. or whether you're just a taxpayer paying for all of it, right? Yes, right. Not paying for the, thinking you're saving money one place or, or right. the other. Right. So one right. of the things I, I wanted to, to bring up and talk a little bit about here in our last, uh, last few minutes, one of the things I love about Vote's core mission is it works in and with incarcerated and formerly incarcerated individuals. For me, that is a, a big deal and a, and a huge part of vote that I love because it's, it's with the community and it's with the people putting your faith in the people yes. that they are, they are capable. And so we talked some about the policy and the laws that vote has has worked on. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering. I want to ask y'all because y'all y'all know this. Um, what are some of the other things vote is involved in? Because vote does a lot more than just policy advocacy and voting advocacy and campaigning. What are some of the other things vote works with and works on and is involved in? Um, one of the things that. Um we 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 trying to be in the 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 process um you know locally Lafayette is talking about building a new parish prison right mm. um and 
for one vote, we want to know what that parish prison is going to look like, meaning how many people are you, how many beds mm -hmm. are you talking about having in this new facility? Um, what type of rehabilitative programming will you, will you have space for? Because, you know, right now they, they don't have that many uh, rehabilitative programs going on. It's more of a warehousing instead of right. mm -hmm. um, making sure that people have what they need before they're, they're released. Um, how, how are they going to deal with mental health? Yep. Exactly. You know, like mental health, that's, that's another huge issue. That's something that our eyes are staying on. Um, and so, you know, anything that <coughs> impacts currently or formerly incarcerated people, um, we've advocated, you know, during COVID, we brought nationwide attention to the fact that the women Hmm. population was at 99% uh, with COVID hmm. at one facility. 99%. Why were all the women getting COVID? Why wasn't the, the Department of Corrections protecting these women? And so we, uh, we did a vigil. We did a, a vigil in front of the women's facility. We even went live on Facebook, reading some of their letters that they had sent to vote. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we um, put that information out and it actually made it to the Rachel Maddow show. Mm -hmm. right, right. Where that, that was seen all over the country. So we tried to bring, um, put a spotlight on things that people aren't even really paying attention to. We are, because we have people on the inside mm -hmm who communicate with us, um, be it food rations or mm. um, deplorable conditions of the facilities, whatever it is, we are gonna make sure that we do our due diligence right. and find out what's going on and, and hear from more than you know just a couple of people. And if everybody is saying the same thing, yes. you yes. know, and so um, we're the ones who are gonna be there trying to correct a problem. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't come bringing problems, we're trying to correct mm -hmm. problems and make conditions and circumstances and situations better for incarcerated and formerly incarcerated people. And, 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 and more so, one of the reasons we do that is because we both remember that when we were incarcerated, and we didn't have any help. We didn't have anyone that, like the system just just left us there, just warehousing us. You know what it, how hard it took, and not everyone has the strength we had, and we realize mm -hmm. that we we think we think our our Almighty, but um, you have so many people who cannot function they they embrace the the challenge because of what's of the, going on in the system and, that, that, and 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 it and mm -hmm. it develops a traumatization inside of them so then when they are released you know it's, they, it leaves no room for them to grow yeah because they feel you know they feel vengeful they feel you know it just it, it just it just puts too much of a of a distraction on them whereas if they are provided medical proper medical mm -hmm. Proper, proper mental health um, evaluation, proper, proper treatment, proper yeah. nourishment, then these people can actually learn to function and think properly. Yeah. You know, so they could make better decisions. They can, they, they, their brain could allow them to prepare for coming home. But if you're living under this distress, like you don't have time to think about when I'm free because, yeah. you know, all this is happening to me right now. So I'm in mm -hmm. I'm in survival mode, yeah. defense mode. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think a lot of people at home know, and this is something that we will probably repeat this number a lot because the more times you repeat it, the more people might remember it. But 95% of incarcerated folks come home. Come home. Right. 95%. 95%. And so the question yeah. becomes, what do you want somebody coming out with, coming home with? But I, I, I want to take that thread and run with it because I know vote does work for people coming home. I know that in New Orleans they have transitional housing, but I also am more curious about um, you all and your work with vote because vote provides community. 
provides community for formerly incarcerated folks, people who understand what somebody's gone through. Mm -hmm. And it's not just formerly incarcerated. I've, I've never been incarcerated, right. but I'm able to come into the community. Also, I was wondering if y'all could talk a little bit about that because people who are coming home and the dynamic vote has created of this community is powerful mm -hmm. and it's important. Because, you know, on the inside, um, especially if a person has done a, a, a long amount of time, we often would hear people, we would dream together and say, well, when I get home, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to make sure that I come back and I'm going to expose this and I'm going to tell about this and I'm going to get some of these laws change and I'm going to advocate for this and I'm going to help you and I'm going to help all y'all. We hear so many people make promises and a lot of people really do have good intentions. Mm -hmm. But then when people get home, life happens. Yeah. Okay. And they kind of forget about all those promises and all that noise they were making while they were still locked up about all the things they intended right. and wanted to do to help make things better for the people that they were about mm -hmm. to leave behind. And so vote gives you that opportunity to hold true to your promises. Right. Hold true That's to right. your promises, to your That's brothers right. on the inside, right. to your sisters on the inside, so where you're not forgetting about them. Mm -hmm. I could never forget about where I came from and the women that I left behind mm -hmm. because those people became my family. I'm closer to a lot of them than I am to my own family, my own blood relatives, mm -hmm. you know. And so it's so true with, with most of us. We, we, I feel more comfortable around formerly incarcerated women, women that I did time with, than I am around people who I'm related to mm -hmm. through blood. And so vote provides the opportunity for you to be able to come into a community to where you will not forget about those promises. Right. And this provides a space for you to be able to advocate for them, to be able to, right. to, to spot put that spotlight on some issues that you right. and your fellow people experience, experience mm -hmm. while you were on the inside. That's what vote does. This, this is a community. And for people who family members are on the outside and you have someone on the inside and you don't know what to do. You, you, you know, you just, you feel like you're alone. This is a space where you're not alone because mm -hmm. you will, you will encounter other people who have, people who are incarcerated, serving life sentences, serving virtual life sentences, who understand and you can form friendships and they can help you through what you're dealing with. And mm -hmm. so that is community. And before we leave, I got to say this Thursday, um, the 16th is our final vote membership meeting of this year. We will not be at the downtown convention center. However, we will be at the Brown Skillet, which is located at 519 uh, South Pierce Street. So feel free to come and join us 6 to 8 o'clock p.m. this Thursday, November 16th. We're going to have a treat. Yeah. Come um, and enjoy our final monthly meeting of 2023. Yeah. I have. So speaking of community, one of the last things I want to say, I have long said and I will say it again. Vote people give the best hugs. Yeah. Vote people give the we best do. hugs. Yeah. Yeah. We're a bunch of teddy bears. So, um, thank you for joining us for this episode of From Chains to Change. Uh, Marcus, you want to take us out with our, our saying? I will. Ready? Mm -hmm. Yep. No surrender, no, no retreat. retreat.